keep those fixtures. Well, I don't know why it's dark. Oh, there we go. Oh, no, it's... Okay, I, just, I guess I got to just sit forward for now. Greetings, everybody. Keith here. Um, some of you know I've been going through um, this cancer issue. So, having various different appointments with various different people, um, many of them so far, uh, well, all of them so far have, been, have given me no issue in regards to the, the mask. And I can't believe that now that the mask mandates have been dropped, that people are still pushing this issue, especially the medical society. So I wanted to get on and I wanted to um, talk about my experience this afternoon in regards to an oncologist appointment that did not go well um, as it was supposed to. And it has nothing to do with my views on how I'm supposed to live life and this and that. It has to do with the fact that these people are willing to do the shit that they're doing. They're, they, and they will come out and state it live. They will state it right to your face, like I, and I'm going to explain to you um, in this. I've got a, a quick little letter I wrote off to attention Joe Murphy in regards to Mercy One. Mercy One is a clinic out of uh, hospital <coughs> organizations. It's a hospital organization out of Des Moines, Iowa that has over 400 different um, agencies involved throughout Iowa. And here in Waterloo, we've got a Mercy One that is part of that administration, and, and it's a local clinic separate from the hospital so it's a different association but the hospital and the other agencies that i've been doing um the appointments and everything with have been just fine and dandy but once i started once i had my first appointment with uh, mercy one it went haywire so i'm gonna flip the camera around i'm gonna show you this quick little letter that i wrote up and let me see if i can get rid of this let me do it this way um I hope you guys can see that now. I think I got the full screen in there. And I'm sorry it's not bigger, so, but I'll, write, I'll read it off to you for, for sure. Um, because I think it's important. And I want you to know, notice at the top I put egregious acts. And then it says, attention, Joe Murphy. We, are ho we hope we are communicating to the proper person. If you feel otherwise, then you have a duty to direct us to whom we need to to whom do we need to communicate? And the reason I put that is because on the Mercy One contacts, it says General Inquiries, and it's Joe Murphy, Executive Director. So when you come to giving directions, he is the Executive Director, and I'm going to give a, a counter-directive. Okay? So that's the one I want to speak to. Um, greetings. And that's why I mentioned he has a duty to direct us to whom do we need to communicate? Because he is the director and he's supposed to direct us. If this is the not, if he's not the right one, he's supposed to direct us to him. Greetings. We send this communication with great disdain on our heart. We would like to address the egregious comments and actions of certain people who work in the Waterloo Mercy One Centers. These wrongdoings against a living soul are in fact willful and will be affirmed under testimony if that is what it will take. The evidence supporting this is, de is statements that were made in the public purview to which various patients may be found to affirm by first-hand witness testimony, as well as my companion and possibly other co-workers in, the, in and among the wrongdoers. On November 30th and at 9.30 a.m., Keith Little did have and attend an appointment set for Mercy One Center at 200 East Ridgeway in Waterloo, Iowa. Upon arriving, uh, i got to fix that. Upon arriving... Keith was immediately handed a mask to which he rebutted. He rebutted the use by King James Version of the Bible, Genesis 2-7, and was told it was no, no issue just as long as he stayed six feet away from others. So, Keith did not issue, uh, did not, Keith did so with no issues while he filled out paperwork. 
At about 10 a.m., a woman named Dee approached and extended a mask and told Keith to put it on and follow her. At this point, Keith told her he would not be wearing a mask, to which she responded it was their policy, to which Keith re responded that it was not law. At this point, Dee tried to convince Keith that he must put it on or they would deny him services, already offered and scheduled. <clears throat> to which Keith stated and quoted Genesis 2-7 from the King James Version of the Bible and asked Dee if she was saying that she was willing to violate a living soul. Keith was astounded to hear Dee state while almost laughing that yes, she was willing to do so. Keith asked her in astonishment a second time if she was willing to violate a living soul based on the one verse and she again replied yes. This presents a conundrum for Dee and the others who conspired to violate the living soul of Keith and proves in itself intent to violate public accommodation as well. The conundrum is the fact that in one statement, D and others involved in the incident conspired against Keith with knowing intent when in fact they are mandatory reporters of abuse as medical technicians and public servants under a medical licensing authority. You don't just uh, you don't authorize yourself, people. Okay. So the authority I'm going to here is, is Joe Joe Murphy. He is the executive director. That's where they get their authority from. So I'm hoping I've reached the right person by going straight to the top. Okay. Now if he tells me something different, I have to go by his word because he is the director. But if I go to somebody else and they try to fish around with me, I'm going right back to him and tell him, "Hey, this guy's fishing too." Okay. This incident is in fact a matter of furthering violations initiated upon the acts and requests of others with all involved, refusing to identify properly, with the exception of Annette Wilson, the administrator, who is the conspirator, in fact, giving directives to violate. So you see how we, gave, we, we just connected another director. Now, I'm the third director. This is a trust operation, folks. Okay? This is trust language, trust operation. Learn it, and it should be effective. The wrongdoers failed to hold up their appointment in good faith and then attempted to violate their policy by then stating that Keith had to listen to D and leave despite the fact that he was nowhere near anyone else but his companion. See, what she did then was, now that I'm no longer compliant with wearing a mask in the back, when I was compliant with not wearing a mask in the front simply by being six feet away from everybody else, I was still six feet away, and now she's changing the policy according to what D wants and says, no, you have to leave now. Even though you're six feet away, you have to leave now. No, ma'am, I'm waiting for a ride. You're going to tell me i got to go out in the cold as a health, a health professional with uh, telling a patient that's got lung cancer that he's got to go outside in the cold because he won't wear a mask? You're putting him in a dangerous situation. These people are not competent to be doing this, people. They are fucking savages. But then stating that Keith had to listen to D and leave despite the fact that he was nowhere near anyone else but his companion. D refused to give her last name so we could hold her accountable for initiating the conspiracy to violate the living soul of Keith. It is quite shocking that anyone in the medical, medical profession would state openly that they would willingly violate a living soul. This is not something we believe Mercy One or anyone else for these certain events wants published in the news or in any court venue. Keith, having been disposed or diagnosed with lung cancer, finds it outrageous to be subjected to restricting the breath of life even further and states it sounds very unreasonable and evades any logic, reason, or logic whatsoever. We are hoping we'll take care of this post haste. So, as you can see, folks, and I'm, I'm sorry there weren't more viewers. I think it's very important. I hope people see this one. I'm going to I'm going to blast this one because this is this is the start of our problem is with the birth registration with these doctors who take a Hippocratic oath to Apollo and the Greek gods and then can't control their own fucking emotions. OK. That's the problem. We've got all kinds of Christians out here willing to uphold the word of God that have been led to believe as lambs to the slaughterhouse that we need to go to these medical doctors. 
Now, I'm not quite so um, upset about it myself for myself because I'm not going to wear a mask. I'm not going to do their chemotherapy. I just want the results of the records of the exams and stuff that tell me things that I don't know. That's all I need is the information that they can they, that they can acquire and give to me that will help me better discern my treatment path and how well my treatment path is going at the current rate. I don't have to take upon all services. I can amend the contract to accept certain services. If you don't know contract law, don't get involved. And then when you do get involved, if you know contract law, better know that you, that you comprehend trust law so you can fix the contracts. Okay? That's what this is all about. In the meantime, I've got to finish this up and get it off to Joe. Um, I just got to put my closing statement on there real quick, and I'm done. Um, but again, just another thing along my path uh, of this uh, lung cancer. I've got another appointment at 2 o'clock this afternoon. I'm sure it will go just fine because we've already contacted um, them and express, express this situation to try to help get all of these different doctors on the same page with me. It's like I explained with my companion. We got all these different um, clinics around the area that she's subject to, and they all got together and said that they were going to deny her services because she wasn't making a payment. So I told them to send me send us a, a, a true bill. And I'll be damned if when we got that statement, there wasn't a dollar sign on there. There wasn't one word that said dollar or anything, nothing. And so we accepted it for the value on it by stating ourselves that the value was zero. Sent it back. This has been over a year and a half ago. And she still goes to all of her doctor's appointments and nobody says a fucking word anymore. Okay? So think about this and, and comprehend it is contract law. But if you don't understand both the contract and trust law, you're not going to go anywhere. They're going to step all over you in every venue. So this is where we get to hold them uh, accountable for the public accommodation that they're violating under contract law and then the trust that they're violating by making a threat against my life saying they have they are willing to tamper with my living soul. Okay, and they did that openly and, and, and willingly. And though it's not in the court and I can't make that statement other than by myself right now, I assure you my companion was right there and she will testify the exact same thing. She was stunned as well. You should have seen the other people in that room when, they, when, when I asked her again the second time loud enough so everybody could hear and, and ask them if they could hear too. You hear this woman say that she was willing to violate my living soul. And these people just sat there, sheeple to the slaughterhouse, willing to sit out in the open with a mask when I was sitting six feet away from them without a mask and they still didn't question. They just sat there with their mask. It's sick. It's ill, I see it. Illicit. Illicit. It's not illicit. It's ill, I see it. You don't fool me. Anyway, if it weren't for you guys, I wouldn't be doing this. God bless. Have a good day, and I'll see you later.